NASA urine recycler, test one, sample one. It's the first water we've got out of the machine. This will allow astronauts to recycle their urine and sweat into beautiful, clean, clear drinking water. First sample, transparency, subpar. Oh, that's just piss. That's just straight up piss. A group of social criminals. These people in the space program. Nassholes, I call them. You're the one who said you walked on the moon when you didn't. Calling the kettle black if you ever thought of it. Saying I misrepresented myself. Get away from me. You're a coward and a liar and a thief. You want me to knock you in the head? Well, I want you to I want you to swear Get to God on the Bible me. that you walked on the moon. Okay. If Get you away. walked on the moon, we're given the opportunity to swear to God that you walked on the moon. I'm going to give you the opportunity to get the hell knocked out of you don't leave me alone. So why don't you just put the end to the record in the argument, then put your hand on the Bible, swear to God you walked on the moon. Mr. Sabro, yeah. knowing you, that's probably a fake Bible. We're well, talking to the wrong guy. Why don't we talk there? to the administrator in NASA? We're passengers. We're, we're guys going on a flight. I don't hit people, but you're going to be on the deck unless you get well, the I'm out. I appreciate it. Get the hell out of my house. Well, I hate your stuff and get the fuck out. Why don't you quote me and say it's bullshit? When the shadows in Iran, I don't give a, I don't give a damn about all that shit. Shit of lunar orbit being falsified. Being falsified? Correct. We've got an unedited tape from a source at the Johnson Space Center. Yeah. Totally I nonsense. Mr. Seibel, you do not deserve answers. If you show this publicly, you're open for a lawsuit. Okay? You search images of Earth from space, you're gonna see that image. I mean, why why would you have fake images and computer animated images of Earth when you can have the real thing? So basically, when you search Earth from space, you should see all real images of Earth from space. Like why the f everybody thinks NASA does science, so why wouldn't you see that? No, you get this ribbons of imagery. Why would you need to do that? Yeah, because there's supposed to be satellites past the Earth orbit. Why can't you just take a fucking picture? Okay, that's supposed to be real. That's a Apollo 17's image of Earth. And they use it all the time and nobody ever thinks about it. You're shown this. This picture is in every single science book. See that sickle cloud formation? This picture is so distinctive. They use it on the covers of magazines. They still use it today. I saw it, it must be three weeks ago now, but I clicked on an article because it had this fucking image in it. They still use this picture to represent Earth. Photo of pain. Photo of pain. Photo of pain. <laughs> How the fuck would you know? <laughs> That's an official photo from NASA. But of course, how many people think that's a photo? <laughs> <laughs>
by causing him to go through this bullshit. <laughs> oh, this is Puka Pipea. This is a distant planet of Venus. As you can see here, you can see all the crater textures. <laughs> on my shirt. <laughs> Yeah, all of those are supposed to be real. They're from Apollo 17. So basically, when you search images of Earth from space and you want to see a real picture, you're going to see that and you're going to see other pictures from Apollo. How long ago <laughs> were the Apollo missions? And then and then you go to recent shit, like, uh, what's it called? The Blue Marble 2012? It's a fucking composite. It's not a real picture. And they admit it. They tell you it's a composite. Simmons' job is... It's primarily taking data and making pictures out of it. That's what this is. A composite of data sets from several different instruments translated into a picture. So she said composite. Now, when you search images of Earth from space, even though everybody thinks NASA does science, they're on the cutting edge of science, they're exploring the solar system. <laughs> when you search images of Earth from space, you should see real pictures of Earth from space. And you're not going to see that. You're going to see composite after composite. You could go to the Blue Marble series. You're going to see composite after composite. And they can't even make you at least 100 images of Earth from space. They don't even bother making 50 or 20. They don't care. They don't have to show you other images of the Earth. They just don't have to do it because nobody questions it. There it is. This picture is in every single science book. It is fake as fuck. And they keep using it because it is supposed to be real. Unlike their composites, which they don't use very often, they use this one. In between each orbit. So some of those are painted on. It is photoshopped, but it's it's has to be. That yeah, of course it has to be. Sort of simulate the atmosphere. And fuck and you. There... there are no pictures of Earth from space. <laughs> And this shows you that those GPS satellites do not exist because if those satellites existed, there would be pictures of the Earth from space. They would have the ability to do that.
It's a Chinese spacewalk. A bubble rises in the pool. It's complete fraud. Here the helmet gets hit on the International Space Station and a bubble rises <laughs> into the pool. This uh, spacewalk from NASA isn't even a month old yet. And here's a bubble taking an odd trajectory because it's in a water pool. It even curves because the water is uh, its not motionless, it's moving. And uh, here on the International Space Station, they once even got caught with a scuba tank in space. It's ridiculous that they get away with this shit. What's even more ridiculous about them filming spacewalks in a water pool and spacewalks are impossible is that the women for the hoax perm their hair. Here she's in front of a blue screen and the background is not moving. The cable is completely still. And in real life, there would be airflow in the space station. The space station would be making adjustments that would not stay fixated. It's just a screenshot. And they just put it in the background. It's blue screen. And her hair is permed for this ridiculous hoax. This is a video that I made about the absurdity with their hairdos. They perm their hair. It's ridiculous. Their hair stays fixated. The public doesn't notice that their hair is permed. And yeah, the women are completely ridiculous on the space station. In zero G, hair is moving through air. It, uh, it behaves like hair moving through air. It does not say fixated into position. And uh, yet, when you watch them on the International Space Station and you look at their hair, it always stays into, in a particular position relative to their head. And it doesn't flop around naturally like it's supposed to. And here is Perm Lady Head. I mean, look at her. She looks like Medusa. She looks like she has fixated snakes coming out of her head. It's Perm like that. Here and be pretty relaxed. Everybody has a hand. Here's another idiot. Her hair is completely fixated. It's a perm. <laughs> it always springs back into that particular position. It's ludicrous. I mean, look at this idiot. She must be a Freemason or something. Because sometimes that's who they get to do these hoaxes. They're sworn to secrecy. And they're fucking pieces of shit. He was a national hero and was likely to be the first man to walk on the moon. But Grissom was also an outspoken critic of the space program and was quoted as saying, someone's going to get killed. Unfortunately, Grissom's worst fears were soon realized. On January 27th, 1967, two years before the first moon landing, Grissom and his crew boarded the Apollo 1 capsule for a full-scale simulation. The problems began almost immediately. First, the capsule's communication systems failed. You copy? No, I didn't read your touch at all. I, I can't read your touch. You want to try the phone? Hey, how are you going to get the motor? We've got to pass between three buildings. Suddenly, the capsule burst into flames with the astronauts sealed inside. Tragically, Gus Grissom, Ed White, and Roger Chaffee lost their lives before ever leaving the launch pad.
Gus Grissom's family believes the Apollo 1 fire was no accident. I think it was intentionally sabotaged by someone. It's been a question in my mind, what was found in the accident investigation and how was that handled? Was the CIA involved or you know, whoever? It, but it was done intentionally. Grissom's family doesn't know who was responsible for his death or why it happened. But they say NASA knows the truth. Gus gave his life for this program, and I feel like that it is up to NASA to come forward and give us a direct answer to what really happened. Were Gus Grissom and the Apollo 1 astronauts victims of a tragic accident, or were they intentionally silenced because they knew too much? We may never know. The cause of the fire is still a mystery, and the capsule remains locked away at a military base. But Grissom wasn't the only Apollo critic to meet with a suspicious and untimely death. Thomas Ronald Barron was a safety inspector during Apollo 1's construction. After the fire, Barron testified before Congress that the Apollo program was in such disarray that the United States would never make it to the moon. He claimed his opinions made him a target. Has there been any pressure on you by NASA? Uh, nothing. We were, uh, my wife and I were somewhat harassed at home when the first thing broke some time back, but uh, it's, it's going away now. As part of his testimony, Barron submitted a 500-page report detailing his findings. There was a real fear that the program could be stopped dead in his tracks. Then exactly one week after he testified, Barron's car was struck by a train. Barron, his wife, and stepdaughter were killed instantly. I believe that Thomas Ronald Barron was murdered because he had the truth to tell about the Apollo project. Barron's report mysteriously disappeared, and to this day, it has never been found. Between 1964 and 1967, a total of 10 astronauts lost their lives in freak accidents. These deaths accounted for an astonishing 15% of NASA's astronaut corps. To keep something that's a lie wrapped up and covered over, you've got to eliminate all the people that can talk about it. We now realize that perhaps the reason Neil Armstrong has never given an on-camera interview is because he doesn't want to lie anymore. What threats may have been made upon such honorable men or their families to possess their reluctant cooperation and later ill feelings towards perpetuating this still darkened hour in American history? NASA's highest ranking official, James Webb, resigned without explanation just days before the first Apollo mission. Why, when he was on the threshold of achieving the greatest accomplishment of his career? All three Apollo 11 astronauts also resigned shortly after their return. On the 25th anniversary of the event, in 1994, Neil Armstrong made a rare public appearance and held back tears as he spoke these brief cryptic remarks before the next generation of taxpayers as they toured the White House. Today we have with us uh, a group of students among America's best. To you, we say, we have only completed a beginning. We leave you much that is undone. There are great ideas undiscovered, breakthroughs available to those who can remove one of truth's protective layers. It is clear from these rarely seen color television pictures that the crew of Apollo 11 brought a high resolution color video camera with them on their mission. Yet the only pictures broadcast live from the moon's surface were these from a low definition black and white camera. In fact, the networks complained because in addition to this, they were forced to shoot the images second generation off of a projection TV of the technology of 30 years ago and were not even allowed to take a direct feed, which further degraded the quality and clarity of the images. From an analytical standpoint, photographic anomalies have to be sought out with an understanding of lighting and shadows. The most straightforward is simple. 
When objects are lit solely by the sun, as all the scenes on the moon were said to be, after all, lighting equipment was not only impractical, it was unnecessary in bright sunlight, then all shadows, regardless of the landscape, will run parallel with one another and never intersect, as shown by this example. In these seldom seen photographs, obtained from a rarely used auxiliary NASA archival site, it is clear that these scenes were lit with artificial light. These shadows, which are cast at different angles, are evidence that a second light source is being used. In addition, the sun would not cause an isolated hot spot like this, only an artificial light would. Again, intersecting shadows and another hot spot. And again. And again. In this magnification of an Apollo photograph, a rock, very likely a paper mache prop because of the crease here, is categorized with the letter C. In later releases of the same picture, the letter is gone, probably airbrushed out. On the moon, the astronauts' only source of light was the sun. They had no extra lighting, uh, no flashes or things like that. Yet in this photograph from Apollo 14, the shadows are cast in different directions, suggesting multiple light sources. The shadows cast by the rocks in the foreground should have been east-west, like the Lem shadow. And in this photo from Apollo 17, again the shadows are pointing in different directions. Outside in sunlight, shadows always run parallel with one another. So the shadows will never intersect. Conspiracy theorists say it's not just the shadows that indicate the use of additional lights, but what has been photographed in the shadows. For example, here's an astronaut who descends into a huge shadow cast by the lunar module. Yet his entire body is still visible. How is it that he is not shrouded in darkness? Here's the same maneuver from another Apollo mission. Again, the astronaut is brightly lit in what is obviously dark shadow. And in this picture, the sun is directly behind the astronaut. His figure should be a silhouette. Yet even the smallest characteristics of his suit are recognizable. It seems like he's standing in the spotlight. And I can't explain that. Uh, that, that escapes me. <laughs> Why? And finally, in this picture with the sun behind the lunar module, the front of the craft is clearly visible. The words United States are crisp and clear. How could these backlit pictures be so detailed? It's because there's more than one light source, which means they're not on the moon. It has been estimated that as many as 20% of Americans believe we never went to the moon. Is it really possible that NASA deceived the world? According to a former astronaut, it's entirely possible. Regarding the Apollo mission, I can't say 100% for sure whether these men walked on the moon. Bill Casing was an analyst and engineer at Rocketdyne, the company that designed the Apollo rockets. There were many problems that, that evolved during the 60s that led people to believe that we're never going to make it to the moon. Casing observed that despite the clarity of deep space, the stars were missing from the black lunar sky. He saw the American flag waving, even though there is no air on the moon. And he discovered that there was no blast crater beneath the lunar lander, where its powerful rocket engine had fired. The noise level of a rocket engine is up into the 140, 150 decibel range. In other words, enormously loud. How would it be possible to hear astronauts' voices against the background of a running rocket engine? Picking up some dust. 30 feet, two and a half down. Great shadow. Four forward, drift into the right a little. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Is this evidence that the footage is actually fake? A sequence shot in a controlled environment here on Earth? Just months before this historic landing, 
a prototype LEM was flight tested at Ellington Air Force Base. While NASA cameras record the test flight, Neil Armstrong struggles to control the unwieldy craft. Then, at approximately 300 feet, the lander flies wildly out of control. At the last second, Armstrong ejects. And floats to safety. If the lander was so unstable and difficult to fly in the controlled environment of Earth, then how could the LEM land six times flawlessly in the alien environment of the moon? The LEM had a single engine mounted dead center, and then they had little, little push jets, thruster jets, a couple of them up on top. This was supposed to control their attitude as they came down. Well, I'll tell you a secret. The instant you moved your tail in that cabin an inch, you would change the load pattern. It would begin to tilt and it would start that thing spinning. The fact that there's no blast crater under the limb is one of the most conclusive pieces of evidence that I find supporting the hoax. In fact, no sign of a blast crater is visible for any of the six lunar landings. Yet NASA's own scientific illustrations clearly depict a blast crater. Then there's one other point. If they had truly landed on the moon, this dust would have then descended on the lunar lander, on the foot pads, and we find not a trace of dust on the foot pads. In the footage of the ascent stage going up, what you don't see is an exhaust plume coming out of the rocket engine nozzle. What a ride, what a ride. But what do we see? We see the ascent stage suddenly pop up without any exhaust plume whatsoever, as though it were jerked up by a cable. It's absolutely unreal. Although it appears that the astronauts are moving in the moon's gravity, which is one-sixth that of the Earth. Percy notes that when the speed of the film is doubled, the astronauts appear to be running as if in Earth's gravity. Also, when the footage of the lunar rover is doubled in speed, it looks as if it's driving here on Earth. If there is no air or wind on the moon, why is this American flag waving? The fact that the flag flaps on the moon where there's no atmosphere means that there must have been a little blast of wind out in Area 51 where they shot this. These two photos seem to have the same mountain backdrop, yet the lunar module is only present in one of them. Seemingly impossible. Since the LEM never moved, and its base remained even after the mission. What a ride, what a ride. Some suggest the same artificial backdrop was used when shooting two entirely separate pictures. Background discrepancies are also apparent in the lunar video. The best evidence are some pictorial anomalies in the photographic record of the trip to the moon. There is one uh, for Apollo 16 where the same shot, the same hill, appears in two different days. This tape was shot on what was reported to be the first of Apollo 16's lunar excursions. But it couldn't pick a better spot. And this video was from the next day at a different location. That is the most beautiful sight. NASA claims the second location was two and a half miles away. But when one video is superimposed over the other, the locations appear identical. For reference, crosshairs were permanently etched into the lunar cameras, so they would have to appear on top of every image. But in this photo, a crosshair is behind a part of the lunar rover. This situation is impossible and has to be the result of technical manipulation and doctoring of the image. 
And in this photo from Apollo 11, the equipment in the foreground is covering the crosshair, not behind it. And in another from Apollo 12, the American flag is covering one crosshair, and the astronaut is covering the other. Kiss the world goodbye And away we'll fly Destination moon We'll travel fast as a light Till we're out of sight The earth will be like a toy balloon What a thrill you'll get Riding on my jet A destination moon We'll go up, 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 up Straight to the moon we too starry blue I'll be out of this world with you so away we'll steal in my space mobile a supersonic a honeymoon leave your cares below pull the switch let's go a destination moon Move. 